everyone. Benedict the Sixteenth of happy memory, when he was the reigning pope, he attacked the rise of aggressive secularism in Western society, which is at risk of drift drifting in what he calls deserts of godlessness. And during his Good Friday sermon, he compared the deliberate attempts to purge religion from public life to the mockery of Jesus by the mob as he was led out to be crucified. For a lot of secularists, religious sentiments are increasingly ranked among the unwelcome leftovers of a bygone age. The sense of the sacred has been allowed to erode from the political and civil landscape, values and norms which held societies together and drew people to higher ideals have been thrown overboard. The Pope has said that Christians should respond to the situation by growing in faith and not allow our modern society to drift into nihilism. Now nihilism is a belief that life itself is pointless and human values worthless. Today, then, we see the rise of an intolerant form of secularism in the West, which seeks to purge traditionally Christian societies of their religious character. This was seen recently in hospitals, where Christians have been reprimanded or even fired for offering to pray for patients or wearing a religious symbol such as a medal or cross round their necks. These people were not pushing religion onto people, but they were happy to show that they were Christian. The same applies to hospital chaplains. The National Secular Society said that chaplains should be paid for by religious bodies rather than the NHS. Now Terry Sanderson, the president of the Secular Society, said that £40 million spent on chaplains, hospital chaplains, would be better spent on doctors, nurses, cleaners and equipment. This may be the thin edge of the, web, the wedge for cutting out paid chaplaincy altogether. The same is true with the furore surrounding adoption agencies. When the government passed the Equality Bill, this put the Catholic adoption services in a quandary because the church believes a child is best placed in a traditional mum and dad married family setting. And according to the mind of the church, the government, in bringing in this Equality Bill, did not have the well-being of the children at heart, which they say is paramount. They were lying to us. This is another example of the church being sidelined to suit the growing band of secularists who dismiss our beliefs. Then, if you remember, there were those silly adverts on buses in London and other European cities which ran, There is probably no God, so stop worrying and enjoy your life. What was striking is not only the claim that God might not exist, but its implication that God is an enemy of happiness. Father Cantamalesa, the well-known preacher to the papal household, said recently that shutting out God from social life is the principal source of man's own happiness and the root cause of the social ills which afflict humanity. Coming now to the question of schools. I notice that there is a growing consensus among the NUT members that faith schools should be phased out. They say they are elitists, which they definitely are not. Playing the elitist card is just another smokescreen for purging God from the classroom and making schools entirely secular institutions. Considering that it was the Catholic Church which first established schools and universities in the Western world, it seems rather arrogant to suggest that the church should dissociate itself from mainstream education to suit the growing band of secularists. And if you think that secularists are confined to the UK, those in mainland Europe are much more vociferous. In the proposed drafts of the European Constitution, there's not a mention of the church, which everyone knows had the greatest influence in weeping in shaping Western civilization, which we enjoy. These secular EU politicians would probably see themselves as heirs of the French Enlightenment, which deified reason over religious faith. Now this is a far cry from Belloc's famous dictum, which said, 
Europe is the faith, and the faith is Europe. The European Union bureaucracy itself is riddled with secularists. Then in the world of broadcasting there is more evidence of the secularist agenda. A typical example was a broadcaster on the World Service recently reviewing a book on ecology. When he discovered that it was based on a religious premise he announced he found it almost impossible to take seriously. Another was a newspaper columnist on the Radio 4 speaking of a friend perfect in every way except for being a serious Christian. Some day her friends hoped she would grow up and break free. The interviewer did not seem aware that the great majority of his listeners would wonder what the famous BBC was doing giving airtime to an idiot nor had it dawned on the columnists that being a Christian might have something to do with her friend's agreeable qualities. There is an idea bandied about by the secularists that you have to be dumb to be religious, that religion is the lost cause. The religious person is not to be taken seriously. They should not be without their leper's bell or their white stick when engaging with the real world. Of course, the secularists begrudgingly tolerate religious people, but only if they keep their quaint beliefs to themselves. Deciding what is right or wrong is a private matter, they say. It's up to the person themselves to decide whether he's ethical or not. Since secular man has dethroned God, there is no need to refer to the Bible or the Church when deciding on moral issues. As I said, Secularists can just about tolerate religious people so long as they don't go public with their weird beliefs. What they object to is that religion should have any part to play in secular establishments. Now, since the church is missionary by nature, we can't accept the fact that religion is a purely private matter. Catholics don't believe in Bible bashing like some Protestant sects but we have a duty to spread the gospel in obedience to the Lord command. We are evangelizers. This mission is by no means confined to priests. The church says that the vocation of the lay person is to build up God's kingdom in the secular world, so I believe that the rise of secularism can also be laid at the feet of the church itself, which includes lay people as well as clergy. When dealing with the secular establishment, I believe the church has been far too compliant. Political correctness, even if it's anti-gospel, seems to be the order of the day, both within and outside the church. We dare not mention abortion, because we might hurt people in our congregations. When is the last time you heard mention the wrongness of living together from the pulpit? The reason why secularists are making such headway is because Catholics also have been infected by the secular way of thinking and acting. Tony Blair, for instance, he wasn't five minutes in the church when he was already telling the Pope what to do. And with the Anglican Church hopelessly divided on moral issues, our combined counter-attack on secularism is very much diluted. But the Catholic Church also has a case to answer. The hierarchy over the past few years have got very wrapped up with child protection issues because the governments have been telling the bishops to get their act together, not cover up abuse like they did in the past. Now that's fair enough. However, we hear very little from the majority of those same bishops about child evangelization which is the reason the church exists. Now in the realm of education, the secular powers that be would have us teach explicit sex education to five-year-olds, which to me is a form of abuse of their innocence. This has to be the product of a godless, misguided, secular mindset. So if the church doesn't show more of its teeth on these ethical issues, then the secularists will have a field day.
The rise of secularism in society should be a wake-up call for the church in the West. It's been playing it safe for far too long. Yes, secularism is the godless philosophy of the age in which we live. Our silence on all these issues makes Christians complicit. So as Jesus says, let the light of your faith shine out and let us not allow, allow ourselves to be sidelined any longer. Thank you very much for listening to me this evening. God bless you all.